Hi there. Hi there. Uh, this is Google Rocks number 26, February 25th, and we have a really special show for you today. We have two special guests, one from the East Coast, our very first um, East Coast guest, and we have a student. So two um, firsts for this show, so we're very, very excited. So what I'll do is I'll go across uh, the board and um, and Jody, if you could tell us who you are. Hi, I'm Jody Brown. I'm a Kalama Intermediate School librarian okay. in Makawero. Awesome. And Matthew, I want you to take more than a half a sentence to tell you, <laughs> tell us all about you, please. And oh, don't be shy. Don't be goodness. shy. All right. Well, my name is Matthew Winner. I uh, am a teacher librarian in Elkridge, Maryland, which is just outside of Baltimore. I uh, have been teaching for nine years now, and I have a blog, busylibrarian.com. You can find me on Twitter at, at Matthew Winner. Um, and what else? I am heavily involved in International Dot Day and in World Read Aloud Day and in things that connect other educators, so I'm into that. I also have a book out through ISTE called Teach Math with the We. And um, I, I'm the host of a podcast where I interview um, friends and, and, and names in the kid lit world. It's called Let's Get Busy. And um, you can find it on iTunes. And my upcoming guests include uh, Raina Telgemeier and Tom Engelberger and Dan Santat and Seymour Simon and a bunch of really awesome people. So uh, tune in and listen to me nerd out with them. <laughs> awesome. And he'll be telling yeah. us more about uh, World Read Aloud Day, which is our theme today. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I mentioned that. World Read Aloud on March 5th, and uh, Matthew is very much involved with that, and we'll hear more about it. But let's go on with the introductions. Michael? Hey, uh, I'm uh, Mike Fercano. I'm a technology coordinator at the Mililani EK Elementary School. Great. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Colt. I'm the librarian at Halekula Elementary School. Okay, Rosie. Oh, hi. I'm Rosie. I'm a junior at King K Kaulike High School here on Maui. Awesome. And, uh, yeah. And I'm Linda Lindsay. I'm a librarian at Seabury Hall here, also on the island of Maui. So we have three Mauians, two Oahuans, and a um, Maryland. Uh, did you say Maryland? Marylander, all right. Uh, Marylander, okay. So let's go over to the <laughs> Marylander and hey, see, what right. he has, see what he has to say. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> very kind. Well, thank you. Um, I, I have to comment um, before I go any further that it's so nice to talk to uh, all of you kind Hawaiians, and I love um, how how lyrical, how musical the names of your schools sound. That's very nice. We have very hard consonants out in Maryland, so it's nice to hear that. Um, let's talk about World Read Aloud Day. World Read Aloud Day is uh, celebrated this year on March 5th. And um, this is an opportunity for us to uh, raise our voices for reading aloud. Uh, it's sponsored by LitWorld, litworld.org, if you want to go on there and find informa uh, more information about that. And it's just this opportunity for us to uh, read aloud to children, uh, to celebrate reading aloud, the power of reading aloud, uh, even if you're not a, a school-based teacher, um, this is an opportunity for you just to celebrate the power of reading aloud and and all the ways that it connects us uh, and supports literacy. Uh, so, uh, before I go any further, let me just tell you that I'm my browser is a little funky, so I will not be able to share my screen tonight. If someone else would like to share their screen, you're welcome to. Uh, okay. But I'm going to talk um, about uh, a couple different things that we have going on with Lit World. Um, being involved in World Read Aloud Day, uh, I am, <laughs> I've earned the title a Radvocate, <laughs> W-R-A-D for World Read Aloud Day, uh, which is to say that I uh, am doing a lot of work behind the scenes to help uh, get more people involved, uh, be more aware of what's going on with World Read Aloud Day, and get more students uh, celebrating. So the biggest thing that, that um, I guess my work is behind is... Um, promoting the blogging challenge. We have a four-week blogging challenge where we are encouraging um, participants to blog about uh, really just reflections about the 
the act of reading aloud, uh, our first week of reflection was uh, February 10th. And we were talking about your earliest or fondest memory in which someone read aloud to you. And there's lots of great memories uh, that were already shared on Twitter through the hashtag WRAD14. And certainly if you wanted to come onto the blogging challenge now, you're welcome to uh, back catalog your, your posts. Uh, this past week, we, we took turns, uh, an adult and a child, interviewing one another about their favorite reading aloud memories, uh, a book that they think everyone should read aloud, um, a character that if, if they could uh, impersonate any character, what's their favorite character to impersonate? And I'll tell you up front that mine is the pigeon. I love screaming, let me drive the bus. That's my favorite thing to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, we also talked about if you could, if you could uh, listen to anyone in the world read to you, who would it be? So all of these exercises are meant to uh, build that emotional connection we have to reading aloud. As we become adults, those of us that aren't continuously reading aloud, I think we lose that connection, and, and, and that it, it's important to recall that. I think we all, most of us, were all raised being read to, um, and that's a special bond that you make when, when you're read to and when you are reading aloud. So this week going on, we're showing a snapshot of our reading life, uh, whether that is um, a favorite thing from your, your bookshelf or a favorite book that you're reading or an image of you reading from when you were a child or what your library looks like or what your classroom looks like. It, it can really be open to anything, but this week we're all sharing photos of our reading life. And then next week, uh, for celebration of World Read Aloud Day and Read Across America Day, which happens to be on Monday, uh, we will all be raising our voices to read aloud uh, and to celebrate the joy of reading aloud. Now, um, there are a couple of different ways that we're choosing to celebrate. Uh, a number of us have um, added our teaching schedules on a Google Doc that we can share with you in the notes for this Hangout. Um, my friends uh, Shannon Miller and Andy Plemons actually started the Google Doc this year. Uh, they're collaborative partners. They do a lot of work together. Um, and the way we collaborate on this Google Doc is that we literally go on and we list our schedule. Uh, here's when I'm available. And each of us take turns signing up for one another's schedule to Skype with them. So all of next week, I'll be Skyping in every one of my library media classes. I have a fixed schedule. So all of my 20-some uh, classes will be Skyping with people all over the country um, to read aloud their favorite books. And we uh, are repeating something that I did last year at my school, which is to say that we are getting on to wegivebooks.org, which is Penguin's. Uh, ebook site and Penguin um, has this really great thing going on with We Give Books. Not only do they have a ton of free ebooks that you read right on the computer, which is wonderful, but also um, when you sign up for an account, uh, you're you're pledging to read in a sense. That every every ebook that we read online, um, Penguin purchases books for schools in need. So by reading on this site, you're actually doing a lot of great work for those in need. So when I'm Skyping with classes next week for World Read Aloud Day, uh, I can pull up We Give Books, and I can share my screen, uh, and we can literally read the book together, taking turns page by page. It's a really special thing, a really special bond that we have. If I have an older class that's joining uh, my younger class, we let them read to us. If we have two young classes connecting, then the teacher and I take turns. But most importantly, we're connecting through literature. I'm meeting new people throughout the country uh, and sometimes throughout the world, depending on uh, if we can schedule, coordinate the time differences. Uh, we are connecting over literature, over great stories, uh, and connecting our students, too, letting them see that there's a bigger world out there, but also that through that world we can be connected through stories and through sharing our stories. So uh, World Read Aloud Day is a, I think it's, I would say it's a really simple activity, a simple celebration for people to get involved in. You can be involved as, as little or as, or as much as you would like, but it's something that I think if you participate will really stick with you, uh, will really have an impact and uh, be something that you'll be talking about for a long time. So I encourage uh, all of the people that, that are hearing this broadcast to consider joining us for World Read Aloud Day and raising your voices for reading aloud. Awesome.
Hey, Matthew, thank you so much. I want to apologize. You know, this is what happens when I have too many windows open because I was trying to keep up with you and I oh. had I had the We Give books open and I had your blog yeah. open and oh, yeah. then I looked back and I thought, oh, shoot, that's Rachel's Twitter page that I have open. So I really apologize. Oh. But um, wait, can I just show you something that um, mm. you inspired across um, the mainland United States and Pacific. I want to show you what you inspired in our teachers because this is pretty cool. So this is what you just talked about, um, the We Give book site. And I thought this is a really great site. So um, I hope that people will you know, visit your blog and look at your links right. because this is something I know our kids would love this too. And then, sorry, wait, I have too many windows. Let me get back to that one. <laughs> and then I just want to show you super fast. Oh, wait, let me show your your blog. Um, oh, yeah, thank you. I love this picture of you oh. with the penguin, I mean, pigeon. And you, um, say that. you are, this is, <laughs> and then um, you're inviting kids and teachers and everybody to pose with their favorite character, you're saying. Was that the that's third right. blog challenge? Okay, so that's uh, really that's fun. Not, and, a, um, not even a, yeah, I would say not even a blog challenge. We're just kind of oh, inviting just pictures. people. pictures. Here's another fun thing. We want to make this as easy for you to get involved as we can. And so on your yes. Skype profile, on your Google profile, on your Twitter profile, uh, we're encouraging people just to take a, a selfie with your favorite kidlit character, whether a photo or a stuffed animal or whatever you have, uh, because in that way, even without talking, that picture can say a thousand words, and we can make that connection just by seeing characters that we uh, so, so common. true. You're right. Yeah. I love that. i got to do that with the kids. I want to show you, too, that um, I'm very behind, so I apologize, but I just <laughs> posted our first week prompt, and what was so cool is that um, I borrowed Shannon's idea of using a Padlet. I'm going to yeah. go, actually, to the Padlet itself. And what really surprised me is our teachers, are like your teachers, like teachers all over, are super, super busy. But I think it's exactly what you said. This question, what are your earliest and fondest memories of being read to, prompted so many teachers to respond. And I loved this one here from one of our second grade teachers. It's a photograph of her reading as an elementary student. And she says, if I can teach the cat to read, I can teach anyone. <laughs> I thought oh. that was so cute. I and love um, their memories are amazing. And it just gave me chicken skin. Actually, one of them even, um, so I'm going back to my blog, my website for a second. It actually like made me tear up a little bit because I thought it was so sweet what this teacher shared. Yeah. So I just want to thank you personally. I mean, I know you have a kabillion followers and you're connecting with oh, all kinds please. of people, but <laughs> wow, far, far away here in um, on Schofield Barracks in Hawaii, you have touched some people's lives. So I just well, really want to thank you. And wait, I told Rachel I would give a shout out to her. She. Oh, yeah. She said um, she doesn't have any time to do blogs, but what she does have time to do are vlogs. And so with her kids, yeah. they did a video challenge. And I thought that's a really neat way to, um, they're taking your questions, but they're just sharing them in videos. So um, That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I was sitting down. But you started I, all this, so it's exciting. Well, I sit down and I, I, I go through, every night I go through the hashtag on Twitter. I put a link up there, uh, our hashtag, WRAD14. And I, I do my best to, as Lit World does too, to, to retweet and to share these, these nice. blog posts that all of you are sharing. Um, and it's really moving for me too to read these stories of uh, especially the adults that are sharing. And I hope that we're sharing with our kids too. For those of us that come on and say, you know, I can remember being on my dad's lap and him reading me uh, Scoodles the Tugboat over and over every morning. I could, it's one of those things that... We need to tell children that because they, they need to understand that, that those are things that are important to us too and that it's, it's a special thing to make a bond over a book like that. So I'm really mm -hmm. glad that you're sharing that too. I loved your Padlet. I thought Shannon had a great idea with that, uh, a neat way that not only can your kids and your staff interact, but we can all interact on that. Everyone from all over the world can interact. So that's, it's, a, it's a really great idea. That is a great idea. I think I, I might uh, tweak it a little bit for myself. That's great. Um, I'm curious to know what Rosie has to say about all of this. Could you share, speaking about reading aloud when you were young, what, what was your experience, Rosie? Oh, okay. Well, um, I was homeschooled until I was 10 years old, so I spent a lot of time with my parents at home, and um, they, they um, 
read to me a lot because we never had a TV or electricity or anything, so I didn't ever see any movies. And um, one of the great things about it is we did read a lot of kids' books, a lot of Roald Dahl and um, a lot of Dr. Seuss. But um, what it was, too, is as I got older, they read a lot of books to me that were more adult. Not, like, adult, but more advanced, like Little Women and... Um, a little bit of Lord of the Rings. I listened to that mostly on audiobook, though, which is another great way, I think, to listen to like books and everything, even though you don't get the connection of being read aloud to, but all of Harry Potter was read to me. And um, what was really nice about being read aloud to is I didn't really have to worry about reading myself, so I never had to read any of those like little kitty books that can make reading not as fun, you know, like Run, Dick, Run, or... Um, like some of those um, just more like redundant kind of simple books. Instead you jump right to like the great stories, you know. And it gave me such an advanced vocabulary and such a cool idea of the world and everything. And it was, it was it's some of my best memories being read to <laughs> um, as a kid every night. And now I read to my younger brother actually. And it's very good. And I'm very happy. I didn't know there was all this like read aloud and stuff and everything. I mean this is cool. This is crazy. Very and <laughs> stuff done. How exciting. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I'm curious, Rosie, could I ask the question about um, your parents obviously didn't think it was important that you re read at five, right? Do you no. happen to know what what their philosophy was? Or did they talk about it? Or it just yeah, naturally yeah. progressed? Or how did that work? It's more my mother, actually. My father, he read aloud to me a lot, too, but he um, kind of, there were times where he wanted us to go to school more and everything, but my mother believes that kids will learn to read when they want to read, and she says about 9 and 10, she thinks, is like the right age, and she worked with a lot of kids because um, her, her mother was a uh, kindergarten teacher, so she was around a lot of kids, and she just, what she believes is that reading, you know, it's about the stories that we hear and everything, and it's not, it should never be a job or something that's not fun. So with us, you know, she never even made us, like, write our alphabet or anything. She thought being a kid is about running around in your imagination, and that's why she was always really against TV as well for young kids. So she just thought, you know, why I had no need to read. I didn't need it for any reason, and she read me all the stories I needed, so why not just wait until I wanted to? Kind of thing. So, yeah. And so when did you go from homeschool to um, conventional school? When I was 10 years old, I was enrolled in Haleakala Waldorf School. And I think they have those, they call them Steiner schools internationally, but Waldorf is um, in America. And they're, they're growing a lot, actually, but, you know, they're alternative and they put a lot of emphasis on art. And it was a great school to start in because I couldn't read, but they didn't really, inf like, enforce, not enforce, that's not the right word, but like encourage reading until later grades, like third or fourth grade anyways, so there was a lot of kids, like they have a similar um, idea or like a similar attitude towards reading too, where they thought like you should wait, you know, kids don't need to read at a super young age, you just have to wait until you want to. And you're doing and, well in school now. I am, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was never, yeah, it's funny, and a lot of things too, I was never felt that behind because I think as like a young child in school in all subjects, you know, like you can learn multiplication and everything at a really young age, but it doesn't really give you any like boost or because of, you don't really start recalling it or using it all. Like when I got to high school, I just relearned a bunch of mathematics, you know. But what I learned as a young kid when I wasn't in school was, you know, being curious, being able to understand things, being able to ask questions, being able to take information that I see and learn and apply it to like life and everything. So I learned all my basics to learn, which is a great thing to learn. Neat. So once you know that, you can learn anything. So I was never behind. That's really cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Okay, I thought we lost Matthew permanently, but yeah. we did not. Here he's back. Yay. Just <laughs> We're not done with you yet, Matthew. <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, that's one of the neat things about Hangouts. You know, you're never 100% sure everything's going to work. And it keeps it, it keeps it real and makes keeps you humble. <laughs> and that's part of the charm of it. So um, does anybody have any reaction to uh, Rosie? 
any comments to her a pretty unusual I think um, experience not too many people um, have her experience you know I, I, I hear Rosie I, and I want to thank you for sharing your story with us that was that was really outstanding uh, it makes me think about uh, this this book I read in in library school called the read aloud handbook by Jim Trelease uh, which if you haven't read it has all these wonderful case studies of the power of being read to and reading aloud and how it develops our our auditory literacy and certainly uh, hearing Jim Dale read you Harry Potter is the greatest <laughs> how do you not become a reader when Jim Dale reads to you uh, it just is a wonderful thing to hear uh, to get to talk to someone firsthand who can testify for that power that you know while your parents are reading to you and, and all that's going on uh, your brain is doing a lot, a lot of work in the back there with understanding those words and how words fit together into sentences and and yeah. and cadences and flow and all of that and and what a what a great case study you then become to all of us that we get to see that so that's that's wonderful um, I would love to know uh, what is your favorite story that was read to you growing up oh I actually have it right here I'm so happy of course it was like all Roald Dahl I love Danny Champion of the World the most actually <laughs> But it's mm -hmm. this book, which is called Buttersnakes and Gumbles, and it's by S.A. Wakefield, and it's an Australian classic that is actually out of print. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Buttersnakes and Gumbles. Yeah, Buttersnakes and Gumbles, and it's the funniest. It has illustrations in it, and it's just the funniest book I've ever read, and I still read it to this day, but my dad, he'd read it to us over and over and over and over, and it makes us laugh and laugh and laugh. So. Love <laughs> that. <laughs> Very unique one. That's fantastic, and I love how um, the emotional ties that um, you know are are um, that come with books that we never f forget. I think that's what makes it so special. Um, yeah. The entire experience, rather than just the book itself, you know, a lot of I'm I'm sure a lot comes to you when you think about just that uh, that book. It's really quite amazing. Yeah. How that I works. Mean, there's just something that you get with your parents and that I got with my younger brother. He's nine years younger than me from reading aloud to them and being read aloud to. You know, there's, you get, you're close to them, you cuddle, you know, you go to sleep every night, like, near your parents with them. And you just share in so many things. Like, I learned a lot about humor and what's funny because they'd laugh at parts and then I'd laugh there too. And I learned, I'm, I love writing now because of it too. Like, I learned a lot about writing and... Yeah, it was always, it's one of the highlights of my childhood, really. And I wish, I hope, you know, most people read aloud. <laughs> and I guess that's what we're trying to promote, so good us. <laughs> good on <laughs> Awesome. That's fantastic. I wanted to brag a little bit about Rosie. She is, um, we're going to have a TEDx Youth at Seabury Hall event on April 6th. And uh, Rosie was picked as one of the speakers. I won't tell her your speech, tell you her speech, but um, it is going to be fantastic. And um, actually, um, Michelle Colt had asked me about maybe bringing the TEDx people on. So I'm, I, I did talk to, I like your photo bomb back there. Is that your brother back there, <laughs> Rosie? Uh, <laughs> Somebody, or your dad? <laughs> Do you want me to talk about books? <laughs> No, he's oh, actually. He's, oh, he, is he in the mirror? Is that your brother? Um, no, this is Martin. He's like a Hanai family, is what we call him. Oh. <laughs> he's a good friend of mine from childhood. Oh. Awesome, that's fantastic. Hi there. I'm going my book here. <laughs> he's joking. He's going on his computer. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, um, yeah, anyway, so next week we are going to talk about TEDx Youth at Seabury Hall and how that all works, and Jasmine will be on. And, uh, yeah, so uh, Rosie was picked as one of the 12 speakers that's going to um, be speaking that day. So she's definitely more than uh, okay smart. She's super smart and um, has a lot to say and has a lot of hope for us. So, um, yeah, we're, we're really happy that she's going to be on. Okay, does anybody else have anything to say or um, add, Matthew? 
Uh, I hope that all of you will join us for World Read Aloud Day on Wednesday and um, certainly be... Oh, good. Thank you. Good on you. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's reading. How can you not be part of this, right? Um, uh, there's so many great ways, too, for you to be connected. And isn't that the, the most important thing that we encourage those connections with our kids, uh, from parent to parent, from teacher to teacher? So... Um, Find that favorite book of yours and uh, read it to a kid and be connected. Great. Uh, does Jody, did you have anything to add or Michael? I know you were good listeners today, but I give you the opportunity to speak if you like. Jody, you have any comments on what you heard? No, I unmuted myself, but I just want to say thank you. It was a great presentation and I was happy to be here. Great. How about you, Michael? Uh, no, not that, but I just want to say thanks to uh, our two guests, um, Rosie and uh, especially Matthew, for staying up so late. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's great that you're willing to stay up that late to participate with us. I'm here to party. If you're talking about books, I'm here. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. And we definitely are going, I'm going to promote this, um, you know, this show particularly before uh, March um, 5th. And um, I'm inspired to try to do more. Um, you know, I think of the Padlet. I love the Padlet um, idea, and I think I'm going to try to do that, sneak it in, so the, and the kids will have fun with it. We'll see what happens. I love those stories. The stories are quite amazing. Okay, so I think we're done, unless anyone has any, anything specific to say. Michelle, you have anything to add or no? You're all good? Oh, no, I just want to say what everyone else said. Um, Matthew, you are a great advocate, and we're Thank so you, glad that you stayed up super duper late on the East Coast for, um, to promote RAD and we will do the same here so thanks a lot. You're very kind for having me on thank you it was my pleasure. Very good okay we're gonna sign off and um, anyone on the panel is welcome to stay we can debrief and maybe uh, sometimes our great conversations happen afterwards so if you want to stay a few minutes that would be great and we are going to sign off, and March 5th is read, uh, World Read Aloud Day. We hope you'll participate. There are people that, uh, across the United States that are actually taking, doing activities during the entire week. Um, and all of the information is in our show notes. We typically have show notes, and the link to that is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, G-R for Google Rocks, G-R 26 W-R-A-D. So that'll be on the YouTube. This is going to be uploaded to YouTube, so the show notes will be there as well. So from Hawaii, from Maryland, aloha. And how, what do you say in, Mar in Maryland, Matthew? It's not aloha. What Cheers. do you say? Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> we say that in Hawaii as well. All okay, right. so aloha. Thank you so much. Aloha. See you next week. <laughs>